Rubik's Cube must be more than a plastic toy. If it brought thousands of people from all over the world to this one hall in South Korea, then there must be something about it different from every other plastic toy. I travelled 10 hours to South Korea to answer the question. What makes the Rubik's Cube so special? It's day 3 and first up I have 2x2. Two two. I held up 3 fingers. No. Uh, yeah, while I'm here, I should mention that Miss One Looking is when I think I know the solution for the whole solve, but and then I do it, but it's wrong. Uh, Miss One looks four out of four. What am I doing? I just missed one looks five out of five solves, which uh, that's the now I'm going to submit my cubes for multi blind. I'm doing a whopping massive attempt. For me, this attempt was all just fun. fun. I didn't want to tire myself out for my main event 3 blind, which was later that day, and I just wanted to enjoy the experience of the Rubik's Cube World Championships. Because the Rubik's Cube brings fun in a variety of ways, not just through solving it, which I was still yet to discover throughout the rest of the competition. Lottie Mart. It's a fun, fun South Korean, I think they call it a hypermarket, that sells heaps of different things. They have a Samsung store, whatever this is, and everything else you could imagine. Quite the amount of noodles. As I walked around, I was amazed by the fact that I wouldn't have been here if not for the Rubik's Cube. I mean, I was literally walking around some store in South Korea because of it. That's pretty insane. But then my fun of exploring a foreign country's hypermarket had to end. I headed back to the venue to have fun competing in my main event, 3 Blind. Apart from the fact that I placed the cover right there, this was not a very good solve. Wait, no, including the cover being? Anyways, I just forgot stuff, made mistakes, and it wasn't a good start to 3 blind. Um, my camera was somehow set to slow motion, so here's some six slow-mo shots of the solve, and one other thing. <laughs> For solve 2, I safetyed a bit to take the pressure off of the last solve. But it was a good scramble and I ended up getting a pretty decent time anyway. With that solve guaranteeing me my place in next round, I could just go all out for the last solve. And believe it or not, sometimes you get some pretty quick times when you do that. This 14.33 put me in first for the round, which was pretty sweet, but it was only a first round win and I wanted a proper podium, so I had to do the same thing in the finals. Hey Ari, what time is it? Milka's time! <laughs> oh, that is busy. This stuff is so suspicious, like, what is it? Why is it that colour? Why does it smell like Panadol? Well, in my experience, it's a good idea to stay away from drinking mystery liquids, so that's why I'm gonna... Uh, It actually tastes like Panadol. That was actually good. Even yeah, if it, it tasted bad. a little bit funky, this is a super fun experience with my Cubing friends. I mean, I never would have guessed to be halfway across the world drinking mysterious milk drinks because of a Rubik's Cube. That's pretty insane. I also would never have guessed to be competing in front of this many people, alongside Felix Emdegs, a 121-time world record holder, and Jody Brewster, a 5-time continental record holder, with a 3-second official solve. I was competing for Australia in the Nations Cup. We were up against heaps of top solvers like Max Park and Timur Kolosinski, so I had to hold my own and not let my country Three, down. Two. Jody and I started off decently, we were even with the other team, so it all came down to Felix versus the last guy on that team, so surely Felix would win. Well he made it very close by messing up his peeler, but luckily he was able to save it and so we just barely won. Yes! Let's go! Dude, I was so oh in the next round, we were up against China 3, which consisted of a few young Chinese kids, so we knew this match would be tough. Because let's face it, these younger Chinese cubes are insane! We still tried the best we could, and we got annihilated. <laughs> 
Even though we didn't win, it was still super fun, fun to have had the opportunity to represent my country. I literally got to compete alongside Felix Zemdex. That's pretty insane. Congratulations to China1 for winning the finals against the Philippines, who made some pretty exciting upsets in their prior rounds. And with that, it was time for day 4. I was so excited to watch all the finals, as well as hopefully compete in 3 blind finals for a shot at a world's podium. I did pretty well in 3x3 in the first 2 rounds of the competition, so I had the opportunity to compete in the semi-finals for 3x3, which is really cool because it was one of my goals going into this competition. My first two solves went pretty well, but then I got three eights, which kind of ruined my average. But with that out of the way, I now just had two rounds of three blind and some finals to watch. It was gonna be a fun <laughs> afternoon. For the first solve, I was just trying to get a success to not put pressure on the last two solves, because I needed to get a decent success to make it to the finals. But I got a rare case and messed up the algorithm, so I was starting off with a DNF. Nervous. On the second solve, I once again placed the cover directly in the way and mixed up a few pairs of my edge memorization, so I got another DNF. I had to get this last solve. All my hundreds of hours of practice throughout my three blind career were dependent on this one solve. I had to get a success on this solve. I had to make it to finals. I had made it to the finals, but first I got to watch some other Australians compete in their finals. Dude, Sebastian Lee just podium pyramid. Let's go. Good job, man. That's so good. Now it was my turn. My turn to make myself and my country proud, ideally by podiuming. I wanted to podium so badly and I practiced so much for it. This is it. I was feeling really, really good going into the round. I was ready to have some fun and try and solve as quick as I could. The first scramble was quite good, but I made a silly mistake and then forgot corners. So once again, I was starting off with the DNF. The second solve was a decent scramble and I was going pretty decently on it. I managed to get a low 15, which I was pretty happy with because I knew it had a chance at podiuming. For my last solve of the competition, my memo was quick. Yeah, so I memorized too quickly and ended up DNFing it. As it turns out, Tommy Cherry got world record mean, followed by Philip Maxwell with an Asian record single, and when I checked WCA Live, I had come in third. But then, Liam Chen's first time got entered late, and he had gotten a time 0.2 seconds faster than mine, moving me to fourth. Guys, I was so close, but props to the others for doing well. Congrats to everyone else, and yeah, I had a good time. It was fun. It's crazy the amount of emotions, good and bad, that are caused by the Rubik's Cube. The fun experiences and opportunities it provides are quite frankly mind-boggling. All around the world, it's brought people together to have fun and solve together. Now that's pretty insane. I'm quite disappointed, but um, I'm just gonna keep practicing harder for next time. I'm looking forward to just continuing trying to get as fast as I can. And yeah, once again, congrats to everyone uh, who did better than me, and thank you to uh, those who have like helped support me to get here, and just those of you watching, and all the people who have like come up to me and encouraged me. Thank you so much.